All right, so if you do not know, the LOR Master Tracker has actually had its API access revoked by uh, Riot themselves. They've decided they no longer want to support it. It was breaking their TOS. So if you don't know much about it, I'm going to go ahead and give you all the information, what happened, uh, why it happened, and why it matters to you. Just go ahead and stick around for that. If you do not know, the LOR Master Tracker was a deck tracker here for Legends of Runeterra. Uh, it did two major things. Uh, one is just like every other deck tracker in the game. If you take a peek here, it shows every single card in your deck. Uh, it also shows every single card that ends up getting played throughout the game. This is face-up information. This is just sort of a, a way of collecting information that you should otherwise already know, right? Um, that's the one thing that almost every single deck tracker does. Uh, now... The thing that made the LOR Master Tracker slightly different from other deck trackers is this tab right here, this first tab, used to show you your opponent's match history. Now what that means is that you would be able to hop in here, you could see exactly what decks your opponent was playing earlier, you could see the exact deck list, you could click on them and see what cards they were running. Uh, and this has sort of led to uh, some people calling out this as being, you know, potentially giving a bit too much of an unfair advantage. Now, as you can see here, Riot has actually ended up uh, revoking the API access for uh, the master tracker, which means that they no longer are able to pull information from Riot's backend uh, in order to, um, you know, supply the, the match history here. So uh, why is this an issue? The main issue is that with the master tracker, you essentially could look up anybody's match history you know say for instance i wanted to look at riot rubens who's match history i could open up his match history see his exact deck list here and when you're getting information like this that's from outside of the game uh, a lot of people consider this as potentially being cheating you know, you're getting a little bit more information than you're supposed to be able to get it gives you a little bit of competitive advantage which i think is a pretty reasonable take honestly i think it's like a pretty reasonable take um now, to be clear, let's just preempt a couple bad takes that I've seen on this uh, from people who maybe don't entirely understand what's going on with this. Uh, number one that some people have been complaining about, some people have been complaining that this is not available for mobile. Um, and that's like a reason that this is giving somebody an unfair advantage, which is not true. You can absolutely use this on mobile. It has a uh, web application. You can just sort of open up and uh, uh, do the exact same thing that I'm doing right here. Um, the other thing is that people dislike that it shows you every single card that's been played. Again, this is face-up information that every uh, deck tracker does in the entire game. And it's only, um, it's completely fine by Riot, right? Riot's completely down with that. Um, and the other take is that everybody is saying that anyone who used this is a cheater. And this is probably a little bit uh, more spicy of a take, right? A lot of people think that because Riot has come out, as we read here, and said that this is uh, using the API in a way that they didn't want to, they didn't want them to, that everybody who's using it is a cheater. Now, the issue with that is that this is a uh, an app that has been around for uh, several months, and Riot, when they are uh, providing API access to these apps, has to individually go in and um, grant access to these apps, right? So they have gone in, they okayed this app, and for these several months has been totally fine with what it's doing. And it's only recently that some people have been speaking out that Riot uh, seemingly ended up uh, revising their position on that and deciding that they needed to take action. We can read here from Dave Guskin, who is the uh, executive producer and game director for Legend of Terra. Uh, we're aware of a third party dev providing tools to automatically scout an opponent's deck. I want to give a quick update about our policy and then action and then the action we've taken in this specific case. To be clear on our policy, it's okay to track your own deck and get broader snapshots of the metagame, but it's not okay to use third-party tools to get a competitive advantage, like by super scouting your current opponent in the moment. Reach out to request that they shut down the tool but receive no response, so we revoked their access to LOR API and pulled support for it now. Which, you know, <laughs> super scouting is a, uh, is a way of describing that I have not uh, heard before. Um, but uh, essentially, they're just saying that um, because this is uh, allowing you to look at your opponent's match history, uh, it's giving you know too much of an advantage, and this is something that they don't want to be seeing in the game. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, All right, so they are talking about this being against their policy, against their API TOS. So let's go and just take a real quick peek at what exactly their uh, TOS, their terms of service for the API, actually say. And the big one here is going to be the second one that says products cannot create an unfair advantage for players, like a cheating program or giving some players an advantage that others would not otherwise have. Uh, so it's basically saying that if you're getting an advantage in game that you otherwise can't have without using this third party tool, that you are uh, essentially um, breaking the TOS, right? You know, you could ostensibly say that it's potentially cheating. Um, the issue with this, though, is that since Riot is, uh, you know, at least by the letter of law, saying that any sort of advantage that you get that you otherwise can't get in game uh, is against their API TOS, it feels like this isn't consistently being applied across all of their games. So for instance, if anyone has played uh, League of Legends, I'm sure that you guys know about OP.GG. OP.GG is a, uh, a a match history site that allows you to look up anybody, um, and if they are in an active game, you can actually look to see uh, information you otherwise wouldn't have in-game. Like these minor runes here is specifically information that you can't otherwise have that is being allowed uh, to you by using this third-party source, which, by the letter of their law, feels like it's probably cheating. Uh, no, of course, I think that a lot of people could look at this and say, okay, well, I mean, you're just seeing like minor runes. How important is that really, right? Um, how big is that? You know, is this something that we need to worry about? Do we feel like there's going to be, you know, a significant competitive uh, edge being gotten here? And like, probably not, probably not. But I think another uh, thing that pulls from the API is actually Porofessor. Again, for League of Legends, if you don't know, Professor lets you uh, look up your entire lobby, and it gives you a ton of information on each of the players here. So it tells you uh, how good the person is with their uh, champion, which is probably pretty reasonable. It tells you if they've never played the champion before in their lives. If somebody's on a smurf, it tells you that they are on a smurf and that they're a pro player, right? Uh, it tells you if your opponent is auto-filled. It tells you if they roam a lot. It tells you if they die in lane a lot. Uh, it tells you if they've, again, never played their champion before, if they ignore turrets, if they focus dragons. Uh, they give you actually just an incredible amount of information that you otherwise wouldn't have that actively could change the way that you're approaching the game. Uh, and it, it feels like something like this uh, it is much closer to uh, open decklist, right? I, I think that when we're talking about open decklist, you know, it, it's, it's pretty easy to say that there's probably pretty impactful Um so if we were to like graph this, right? Like the impact here, if we're looking at a graph here, so like over here would be like ghosting, right? So I think that like ghosting, if you end up like, uh, you know, if you look at somebody's stream and you can see either their full hand or, you know, their mini map on League of Legends, that's probably like the most cheating that you can do, right? You're basically getting perfect information um, and that's, you know, a significant advantage. And over here would be, you're doing literally nothing. You know, you're playing uh, just the game as Riot and God intended. So if we were to graph this, I think that like OP.GG is probably right, right here, right? It, it's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal. Um, but it is definitely a little bit of an advantage that you otherwise wouldn't have. Um, I think if we're going to continue to graph along here, I think that we could probably put like Porofessor right here. I think the Porofessor is giving you quite a bit of information uh, that could definitely impact the game. And again, it's information that you otherwise wouldn't have. And if we're playing Open Decklist, I think I'm probably playing like Open Decklist right here. I don't think it's open. I don't think it's anywhere close to like ghosting, right? But it definitely gives you some amount of an advantage. Um, and I think that if we're looking at uh, Riot really cracking down on this and deciding that uh, that Open Decklist are something that need to get cracked down on, like with the Master Tracker, uh, then they probably need to reevaluate their approach to other things because it feels like it's very inconsistent, right? It feels like it's very inconsistent. Um, now. Another thing to keep in mind here is that even though Riot has gone out of their way, they've decided to hit up um, the LOR Master Tracker. This is sort of the, the one that is getting hit because every other uh, tracker in the game doesn't really have this, right? It doesn't let you look people up. Um, but if they do end up removing this and you're not able to look people up and get people's uh, match history, the issue is that you can get it other ways. Uh, there are other people who are using the API and are using it in a very similar way. So for instance, StatHub GG over here um, actually lets you go to the leaderboard as long as you're in Masters, which I mean, you know, all my viewers are in Masters, right? Uh, if you're playing against somebody in Masters, like let's say again, we're looking to find Mr. Ruben Zoo, I can control F Ruben. We go to the Masters ladder, we, kick, we click Ruben, 
It takes a second to load, and it gives us his exact match history. I can click on here, click Dex. The UI is absolutely awful, by the way. Genuinely awful. Uh, but you can get his exact deck list. Um, you know, you could copy it and then, you know, put it in, like, actually a good, you know, uh, a good website that you can actually tell uh, what the fucking cards are. But, yeah, this is... Uh, this is another avenue that you can get the exact same information that's available through the LOR Master Tracker. So it feels like when they're targeting this specific, um, when they're targeting this specific tracker, there's other ways for people to be able to get this information, right? Uh, and the issue is that if you end up cracking down on all of these, and that might be the way that you go about it, right? Maybe you need to decide that, like, okay, well, if all of these places are giving uh, this match history information, uh, maybe we just need to crack down on it. Maybe there shouldn't be any forward-facing match history. Maybe you just shouldn't be able to look at it at all. Now, the issue with that is, uh, for instance, like Runeterra AR. If we go to Runeterra.ar, and I want to look up, uh, like, Cameron Hanzo. You know, Cameron Hanzo, big thralls player. I just want to look at him. Uh, he actually has his account locked on here, right? So if we come over here, I want to get his list. I can't get his list. It's sad. It's locked. Feels bad. We could force every single uh, API user to do something like this. We're not able to actually get uh, the deck list. Now, the issue with this is, is that uh, the people who are controlling the API or, you know, um, that are devs on these websites, you know, like Vivo, uh, who's the creator of Runeterra AR, still has access to this information. Right. Uh, it feels like when you're making a change like that, um, it's much more of just taking the power to um, cheat or pull up these deck lists and putting it in the hands of a select few people. Um, and I say select few, but literally anybody can go to Riot's site right now and get an API code. Um, for the, uh, for the permanent, like, front-facing apps like these, like Runeterra.ar or Master Tracker, you have to go in and get, uh, a, like, a permanent API, um, code, uh, you have to get it, like, hand, um, hand allowed by Riot, uh, but anybody can come in and get one for 24 hours, um, and this 24-hour one allows you to run 100 requests every two minutes. So if you really wanted to, you could build your own personal version of this that literally just pulls match history. Because the issue is that the information is still available there from Riot. Riot's just giving us the information. Um, and if somebody wants to, they absolutely can uh, cheat, right? They absolutely can. Now, so then if we're deciding, okay, well, it, it sounds like, you know, even if we end up getting rid of this forward-facing match history so that people can't cheat, um, you know, maybe we just need to uh, cut all the API, right? Like, maybe that's the uh, maybe that's the way to fix it. You know, if nobody has access to the API, then nobody can cheat, right? Um, I think that that is probably one of the worst um, options available to us. It, it feels like that's kind of where we're being pushed, though. Right? When everybody's complaining about uh, the fact that everyone has access to uh, the match history, it feels like we're pushing to an instance where we're just going to decide that we shouldn't have access to API at all. Because when we do, people abuse it. Um, the issue with that is that we no longer have stats. Right, We no longer have stats. We no longer have uh, any match history. Because for some reason, in-game right now, there is not a match history. Right? Um, it, it feels like this would be very crippling to the community, not to mention the amount of people who've spent time uh, developing these websites and developing these applications, uh, essentially just getting it flushed down the drain. Um, this would be like, you know, the apocalypse um, for, you know, a, a lot of the, the, the stats in the community. So this would be like worst case scenario, right? Absolute worst case scenario. Okay, so if we decide that, you know, okay, well, uh, you know, these haven't really been options, right? Like, each of these have had a downside. The other options, um, I, I think that there's a couple more. Uh, so the other option is that you could just leave it as it is, but say that anybody who's caught using the match history and looking up the information in-game, you know, like if I queue into Riot Rubin Zoo and I look up his information, uh, if anyone's caught looking it up, uh, then that's cheating, right? You know, we just decide, okay, that's cheating. If you get caught, uh, you're going to get banned, um, which which isn't, like, the worst case in the world. That's kind of what the current approach is to, like, ghosting um, or to stream sniping, right? Where uh, it, it's kind of, like, an accepted thing that, like, everyone's able to do that if they really wanted to. Um, but, you know, if you get caught, then you're going to get, like, banned or ostracized from the community. The issue is that it's basically impossible to police, Right? Like, you can't actually catch somebody unless somebody's on stream literally looking it up. Right? 
um, which which feels like it's not a real solution, right? You know, we're kind of just closing our eyes and letting people fleece us. Uh, the other option is to leave it as it was. So like, you know, two days ago where it's basically, um, you know, an open secret that everyone is able to do this. It's available to everybody on the app. Uh, you know, mobile players can do it. Any uh, pe person on a computer can do it. And you're essentially creating open deck lists on ladder, right? Now, if we were to go with this, this is basically just evening the playing field so everybody has access to it. Ideally, this would be a Band-Aid solution for a Riot permanent solution down the line, right? Riot would come out and create their own, uh, you know, open deck list or their own match history in client. Um, that way they don't have to be uh, outsourcing all of this uh, work to community devs, right? That's an option. But again, all of these have significant issues attached with them. The other option that I've seen sort of uh, pushed around a little bit is uh, people are suggesting that when you queue into an opponent, you actually don't get to see their name. Um, this is kind of a cool solution in that you won't be able to look people up, right? You know, I, I won't know that I'm playing against Ruben, so I can't look Ruben up. I can't look at Ruben's uh, match history. That's definitely an option and honestly one of the better ones. But again, this one also has issues. Um, I would say that one of the big ones is that we're already in uh, a, a version of Legend of Terror that has a very poor social dynamic, which is to say that your interaction with your opponent is very low. You don't have a chat. You don't have a way to add people at the end of the game. Um, the only way to like join the community is to join like Twitter or Twitch or uh, Reddit. Um, and if we're removing uh, the ability to even see your opponent's name, it feels like it's going to be incredibly isolating and not good for the community overall. Not to mention, I think that's going to be really harmful for a lot of people trying to come up in the scene. Um, I, I think that one of the ways that people's names really become uh, noticed is you run into someone on ladder a lot, right? It's a relatively small community. So if you play it like the same time, you're going to see the same people over and over and over. And you start to recognize people. You start to get respected for people. You know, it's like, oh, that person just beats my ass on ladder every single time. They're a pretty good player. You know, maybe you start talking with them. Maybe you add them somewhere else. Uh, maybe you watch their stream. Maybe you uh, decide to scrim with them. That's a lot of how the community is formed. And if we end up uh, losing that, uh, it feels like it would be kind of bad, right? I'm definitely not excited about that. You know, even if that is one of the more elegant solutions that aren't just like, you know, completely destroying the world uh, with our, uh, with just like revoking everybody's API access. Um, yeah, it, it might be one of the better options, but it doesn't feel great. Which sort of leaves us in a spot where there's like five different options of things that we can do and none of them seem good. You know, we could just like cut off API. That's not good. We could cut off front facing match history, but that just consolidates the power on a very small amount of people. Um, we could just, uh, uh, we could leave it as it was, um, leave it as it was, but sort of just, you know, accept that people are going to cheat. Or we could uh, leave it as it was, but, you know, allow it. Say that it's allowed. And with the, again, with the intention that Riot ends up taking that over eventually or just making it anonymous. I, I think there's a lot of options. None of them are great. Um, but, yeah, that's sort of where we're at right now with this. We're kind of in limbo. We don't know if Riot's going to end up going after the web apps like Poor these and me. revoking. Uh, another, another one. one. Why are there so Why are many? there so many? Yo, Cal Vitatis, thanks for the sub, buddy. We're sort of at this position where we don't know if people are going to uh, get their uh, stuff revoked or not, right? Their API access. So we're kind of in limbo seeing where Riot wants to go with it. And it's, uh, it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit scary. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. If you have opinions on it, is it cheating? Do you think that Riot should just allow it? What do you think the best solution is for this? Because it, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of good ones. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of great solutions. But, you know, here we are. Chat, what do you think? Chat, do you have any ideas? Did I miss anything? Did I miss anything? Rip all the API. God, that would be so fucking terrible. That'd be so fucking terrible. Never cared for it, nor did you ever complain about it, but you think it's funny that people think it's cheating? I think it's like, I think it's like a very reasonable, um, I think it's like a very reasonable take that it's cheating. Because like, the thing is that you are getting- Ah! Oh, uh, another another one. one! Why are there so many? Why are there many? so many? A hyper Loki with the sub? Five months, bro, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Because the thing is that you are getting more information than other people have available to them, right? And I think that if you look at the letter of the law, um, I think it's very hard to say that it's not cheating, right? As far as Riot defines it right now, it is kind of cheating. Can you read Reddit comments? <laughs> I think I tried to address, like, the common bad Reddit comments. I should just make their own version. Ideally, yeah. 
do I know how other digital card games like Hearthstone handle this issue? Hearthstone's ladder's anonymous, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. And I'm pretty sure Magic literally has zero stats. Like, literally zero stats. Told hiding names wouldn't stop deck trackers from pulling data without opponent. I mean, so, like, they would still, like, Riot would do, like, as they have right now, where the LOR Master Tracker isn't allowed to uh, pull their match history, right? The LOR Master Tracker, like, is not allowed to pull it. So, yeah, you'd have to know their name. Should have looked up Fezibu? I think so. Magic has no API. Yeah, which is so cringe. So cringe. Integral for a great competitive game, but using it to so to write a soft advantage against others shouldn't be allowed. I definitely feel that. I definitely feel that. It's just hard, right? It's just hard because a lot of people don't even want open deck lists, right? Like, open deck lists is a very controversial thing that a lot of people just really um, don't want. Uh, even if I think that everybody kind of agrees that open deck list sort of is a more competitive environment, right? I, I think that more often the better player is going to have more information and make uh, more choices that end up winning them the game, which I think is like sort of the idea of like a more competitive environment. But I don't think that Riot really wants a competitive ladder. Um, I think that they very much want to have best of one. That way it's short. Uh, that way, you know, mobile players are able to just hop in. It's very casual friendly. Uh, they want best of one closed deck list. Smite has an interesting view on this. Each player can set their profiles to private to hide themselves from the API and can't be pulled data from. Yeah, and I wouldn't like that. I think that losing, I think that a big part of losing uh, API access and losing stats um, is A, I think that uh, all of the stats that we have are going to be significantly um, less reliable, right? You know, if we're only getting stats from like half the players, you know, it feels kind of, you know, not great. Um, but also I think that it leads to more people like hiding deck lists. Um, and stuff like that, which sort of like stagnates the meta in really like hardcore, um, hardcore uh, incentivizes, or I don't know about incentivizes, it definitely helps out like people who are already established within the scene and like have a communication network um, where they can test together and then just like hide picks, which I think isn't good for the community at all. Then you're thinking checks in Hearthstone's relevant? Mono buff and NAR nerfed, ruin this. Yeah, I'll check it a look in a second. You have one screen, according to this, everyone should be forced to only have one screen. Yeah, see, that's the other thing, right? There's a lot of people who are saying like, oh, well, you know, either uh, I don't want to tab out on my phone, right? Um, or, um, you know, my phone's not able to handle tabbing out or, you know, having a, <laughs> a web app open. But like in League of Legends, there's a lot of computers that, you know, either can't tab out, you know, to use like Porofessor or op.gg. Um, or they just, you know, can't stay above 30 FPS. Like, are we really going to handicap everybody because some people have, like, poor hardware? I think it's, like, a bad precedent to set. Ranked open best of three and casuals be closed deck list? Maybe. I, I think that, like, if you make it best of three, you're really hurting your uh, casual audience that plays ranked. I think most people, I think a lot of people, like, want to dabble in ranked. Having fun for ladder? What's up, Drizoth? Having names the most simple solution? I agree, but again, I think that it really hurts the uh, community. I think it really hurts the community. Rich gets richer situation. That's what MTG was and is. Yeah, if you end up like uh, sequestering all the information and like people are able to just like hide their shit from you know stat uh, places, or you're not able to look up anybody's account, uh, then it, it very much is just helping out the people at the top. Personally wrote the code and interface with the API to make your own bespoke deck tracker. And you could, right? You don't think Porofessor is a good comparison at all? Why is that, Taha? Why do you say that? Because I, I think, honestly, I think Porofessor is a great, uh, I think Porofessor is a great comparison. Because it's giving you a ton of outside information and not just small things like uh, you know, your minor runes that you can't see in game, which I would argue uh, can be pretty impactful, right? Like knowing if your opponent has free boots um, or futures market uh, can definitely impact the way that you uh, try to interact with them in the early game. Um, but not just that, but it also gives you so much more information. Like it lets you know if somebody's smurfing, um, it lets you know uh, their, win con or their win rates, it lets you know their play styles. Like this guy obviously doesn't gank early and doesn't pressure. Uh, turrets, right? He's just going to farm dragons. So you know what I can do? Oh, I know that. I'm just going to ward his shit, bro. Like, I'm just going to ward dragon, 
right? Like, this person obviously has never played this fucking champion in their life. I can camp them. This person has never played this fucking champion in their life. This guy ints early. Like, you get a ton of information that you otherwise would not have. So, like, by the letter, it's absolutely cheating. Um, and not just that, I think that it's enough information that it would be worth, uh, it would be worth, like, potentially, you know, not allowing. Imagine if Zoe Nami was hidden into worlds. Yeah. Hearing hardcore players like you, too. You don't want to be forced into best of three. Yeah, for sure. Taha, where's that, buddy? Let me know why you don't think it's good. Because I, I genuinely feel like it's good. Hide profile name. Display username. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Let's see. No, you should visit your local Honda dealer. True. True. Bad smites. Yeah. It's kind of toxic, too. It's kind of toxic sometimes. Which is pretty fucking funny. But yeah, no, I, I, I genuinely think Poor Professor is like a one-to-one. -one. Like, I, I drew it here. Like, I'm, I, I don't think it gives... Like, open decklist is really important. Like, open decklist absolutely matters. I think anybody who says it's not an advantage is just lying to you. But I think if you look at shit like this and you tell me that this isn't an advantage and this isn't information you're getting outside of game from a third party that's abusing the API, like, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. <laughs> no longer see what decks use in the master lead rewards? Um, unlikely. You can see all that in the game without third party. Also, poor professor isn't used by any good player because the data isn't actually reliable. So you cannot see all this information in game. You cannot see like any of this information in game. What do you mean, Curry? Literally none of this is available in game. About public law history being opt in. Certain level of skill is kind of information changes nothing about your gameplay or your decision making though. Like, okay, sure. I mean, are we literally only balancing for the top of ladder? Is that really the, the decision that we're making? Like, A, I, I still think there's a lot of valuable information even at the top of the ladder, right? Um, you know, even just, like, it, I maybe got a bad screenshot here, but like, even if this person's on a Smurf, it literally tells you who the fuck they are. It tells you who they are, which I, that's crazy to me. You don't care if I do top this top first time? You actually do. I, I think you're wrong. As somebody who has been D1 in League of Legends, I think you're just fucking wrong. I think you're straight fucking wrong. If you know that your opponent top laner is auto-filled, that matters. That absolutely matters. But yeah. Top tier bits is Giga Chaz. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Professor does even more stuff, like show in seconds on map where jungle camps inhibitors respawn. I think that's uh, the Blitz app. I think Blitz app does that, but yeah. Which, but that's like, that's technically like available information. It's very similar to like the, the card tracking here, right? Right, implementing a tool made by them. They'll never do anything. Yeah, I mean, again, like I think hopefully, ideally, you know, a lot of the changes that they make would just be like uh, Band-Aid solutions. That way they're able to give us their own um, you know, like match history and stats and shit. See your runes during the match? It's the keystones, but not the tiny runes? Yeah, you can't see their tiny runes. Um, which matters. Again, it literally matters. If you know that your opponent's on free ass boots, if you know that they're on futures market, especially mid lane, it matters a lot with how you're going to trade into your opponent. I think it fucking matters a lot. You can also OPGG to see autofill. I agree. I agree. They're all giving extra information. Again, this is another reason I'm using these as an as an example of using the API, the third party API, to get information you otherwise wouldn't have access to. Right? Next plat player, if it was first time on a champ, you're about to go 08. Best case scenario. <laughs> Separate username that's displayed isn't linked to your match history. Um, maybe? I don't know. Knowing if your opponent's season four Dyrus, it matters. True. D1's low elo? Is D1 good? <laughs> D1's like point z top 0 0.01%. At least it was when I hit it. D1's, D1's really fucking good. Like, as much as, you know, <laughs> League of Legends players are like, brawl, anything below challenger is actually dog shit. Um, actually, have you been a hard stuck challenger for uh, three years? You're actually dog shit if you're not a pro player. But actually, all the pro players are dog shit too. Um, if you're not on, like, the top five players, uh, you know, it's in, like, the best team uh, on the planet, you're actually just a dog shit player. So, I don't know. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty cringe. 
Do I not agree that being able to identify, you know, certain cards run by opponent, you wouldn't know without the app changes your decision making way more than knowing if your opponent top has good CS. Um, I'm good CS, sure. I mean, yeah, if you want to like, you know, cherry pick like the weakest point, like yeah, for sure. There's definitely information here that doesn't matter, but I also think there's information here that absolutely matters. That absolutely matters. Um, yeah. Good decks don't care if you know the cards in it. Strong because it hits the meta. I, I think that I think open deck list matters a lot. By the way, guys, having open having access to your opponent's full list matters a lot. If you're not faker, you suck. True. How do I feel if match reporting through the API had a delay by like an hour to a day, so you can still get meta stats, but we can't get as accurate info about the opponent? Um, I don't think it would matter that much, really. So most people don't change their deck stack at all. Going so on tilts easy is pretty cool. Yeah, you see somebody right here. This means they've lost like four games in a row. Yo, what's up, Aneda? I tell you, Sion does the level one cheese, which is insane info. True! Doesn't it also tell you if somebody um, if somebody proxies? I'm pretty sure it used to. I don't know if it still does. I might be wrong. I haven't played in a couple years. But I'm pretty sure it literally used to tell you if people proxied. Matters much the way you play the games, not knowing if your opponent runs Vengeance or not. So again, like, if we're looking at it, I, I don't think Poro Fester's, like, as impactful as Open Decklist, right? I'm not saying that Poro Fester's the exact same. I'm, think, I'm saying that Poro Fester's absolutely giving you a ton of actionable information uh, that absolutely matters. That absolutely matters. It is extra information that you can act on, you probably should act on, um, that you otherwise would not have access to. Um, again, I, I think Open Decklist is probably more impactful. Probably. But I don't think that, like, this right here, I don't think this right here matters. Um, I don't know. Like, we, we could get into the weeds about it. We could be like, um, well, actually, I think that what is acceptable, the acceptable line is um, actually right here. Um, anything to the left of this is fine. And anything to the right is not fine. And, like, I don't know. We could argue about, like, where this line is and, like, what constitutes enough of um, a competitive advantage to matter. Right? But once we start getting into the weeds on that, which I think is probably a reasonable thing to do. We're no longer looking at this. We are no longer looking at this. We've gotten to the point where it's like, yeah, I mean, we're this is all fucking gray area. Like, just because this says it's wrong doesn't mean as much. Because, like, we're, we've moved past that, right? we moved past that. To the stream late, you didn't see a graphic? Oh, no worries, bud, no worries. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I... I, I I think that Riot's in a really rough position. Um, you thought you were saying the exact same? No, I, I don't think that they're necessarily exactly the same. But I do think it's impactful. I think it's impactful enough that if they're going to ban open deck lists, I think they should ban shit like this. But yeah. And most people at the top know each other in the league mostly anyway, so they're aware of most of the info there. Um, I mean, sometimes. Sure. But like, I don't think that they necessarily are balancing around the top of the ladder, are they? I don't think that Riot's making this change because, like, the top 200 players in Legend Rune Terra hate open deck list, right? Of course not. If they were balancing around the people who um, are playing at the top of the ladder, I think the majority of, like, competitive players at the top want open deck list, right? They're doing it for casual players. They're 100% doing it for casual players. And if they're doing that for casual players, do you, do you not think that this hurts casual players? You don't close deck list? Okay, Dark Codius wants closed deck list. <laughs> but the point that I'm making is that they're not, uh, they're not trying to... Um, they're not trying to, like, cater or pander themselves to, like, you know, really low elo or really high elo players. That's obviously not what they're doing, right? Definitely George Cash. What's up, Spikes? You just want to play Solitaire? Oh, my God, Dark Uh But, yeah, no, I, I think Riot's in a rough spot. And the way that they've approached this with, like, this knee-jerk reaction, because I, I think that's part of the issue, is that there was, like, this knee-jerk reaction um, where... People bitched on Twitter for like three days. So they came out and they said, okay, fuck it. Fuck your API access. They didn't stop to think for a second that like, oh, well, this didn't change. Oh, well, I mean, this still exists. You know, they, they didn't stop to think for a second. It feels like it's 100% knee jerk. Am I participating in the custom card contest? I don't have decided yet, Anita. Probably. Do casual players even notice though? I and mean, we could check Reddit. I think Reddit's very casual. The, the Reddit, uh, is very casual and they're fucking pissed off about it they're incredibly pissed off that like this has existed for so long and they didn't know about it <laughs> there's so many of these threads where they're literally like um 
they're literally like, oh my god, all these fucking cheaters. Twitter's literally just filled with cheaters trying to justify uh, why they're boosted with the uh, with the extra information. It's it's so fucking cringe, actually. It's so fucking cringe, actually. But yeah. But yeah, no, it's uh. No. Nobody told Reddit. Yeah. Was Reddit not pissed off about though? Yeah. And I, I I think Reddit's like compared to at least like my circles on Twitter, I think my circles on Twitter like lean towards being more competitive players because that's like the people that I follow, right? Um, because you can like cultivate who you follow on Twitter. Whereas on Reddit, you can't do that. And I think Reddit's filled with like a lot of casual players, which is fine, by the way. I think that casual players' opinions do matter. I think they a hundred percent matter. Um absolutely, we, we should care about them. A hundred percent. Uh, but at the same time, Reddit's very much casual, I think. Everyone's a cheater? Yeah, everyone's a cheater. Uh, anyway, that's my take on it. That's my take on it. Realistically, like, if we were trying to come up with, um, if I was, like, to try to say, like, what I think the best option would be, um, as somebody who's, like, a big fan of open decklist, I wouldn't mind just having open decklist. Right. But I think a lot of people dislike that. And I think Riot doesn't really want to do that because even if they end up implementing like open deck list, um, I, I think that uh, I, I think that it definitely does at least somewhat negatively impact mobile players um, because it's like more difficult uh, to do it. But at the same time, you know, I don't know. Mobile players bitch a little too much. <laughs> I think that's probably the direction that like I would prefer to go. Um but it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. I don't think that there's, like, a correct way to go. You know? I don't think that Riot has, like, an easy response. I don't think that Riot has, like, an easy way to go here. I feel about implementing open deck lists for Masters only. Or even Diamond Up. Uh, and you definitely could. You definitely could. But again, like, if you're... So the issue is, if you're doing something like this, Taha, uh, when we were talking about it earlier, the idea is that, like, is Riot going to limit this right here? Because if they, if they don't limit this right here, then anybody can look up anybody, right? As far as I know, you can look up literally anybody. Um, which means that, like, even if you're saying, like, it's open deck list, you know, diamond up, um, you know, they would have to, what, like, limit this? And then Riot would have to have their own in-app um, open deck list, right? Which I think is, like, a good thing. I think that that's something that they should do. But that's a lot more development, and that's a lot more difficult, right? But, yeah. Make their API private. So again, I, I think that like killing the API is like probably bad for the game. I think it's incredibly bad for the game. But yeah, just to reiterate again, I, I think that's a really difficult uh, position that Riot's in. You know, how they're going to be able to handle this, I don't know. I'm excited to watch, frankly, because, you know, whatever direction they go, I hope that they can stay consistent. And I wonder if it ends up affecting stuff like League. We'll have to see. Um, either way, I want to hear your guys' opinions. Get down in the comments, let me know. Um, also, I'm also at, I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. If you stuck around this long in the video, go fucking subscribe. Uh, it's free. It doesn't you know cost you anything. I'd appreciate if you do that. But anyway, we'll see you with the next video probably tomorrow. <laughs>